What a time, my damies. So, obviously, we need to have a little quick discussion here about the last video because some new developments have come up. And uh, the two developments are, first of all, the major one, and just flat out, the experiment is invalid. There is no question about it because I was unable to confirm my original uh, assessment that this helium is 99.98% pure. Um, a couple of viewers have brought up concern about that. I, of course, did do my due diligence in researching that uh, even though this is party balloon helium, that it is pure. I had uh, looked on the company website. It said that it was only 80% pure. But then when I looked at some other sources, it indicated that that is absolutely not true. It's actually 99.9998%. I called the company. They told me that it was 99.98% pure. Other people called the company. Some of you guys did. Got different result. I called the company back. I got a different result. Um, and then some other sources that I talked to, some people who are experts in the gas industry said that helium is helium. It's highly, highly regulated. All helium is the same percentage. And other experts said that no, because balloon helium can be diluted. It's not regulated. So I don't know, um, I'm pretty confident that this helium is somewhere between 88% pure and 99.99998% pure. But of course, had I put 12% air into that car, well then without question, that's what induced the lean condition because I was introducing oxygen into the system and not helium. So that's, um, that frustrates me. The second concern was with the experimental design. A lot of people having issue with my introducing the helium through the brake booster um, as opposed to through other sources of the car. I will tell you that th there are, you know, I don't want to go into the chemistry of this too much because I know that the majority of people aren't chemists and um, it turns out that, you know, a lot of people uh, want to be chemists maybe or whatever. I'm not a chemist actually. I'm a molecular biologist, so there's a difference there. But of course, um, I did take some chemistry into account. Uh, helium is an extremely, extremely light substance. It doesn't even remotely compare to density of propane. Considering for the uh, helium molecular weight, and I know some of you have molecular, what? Uh, but considering for some of the chemistry effects here, um, the entry through the brake booster was the most reasonable thing, and I'll, I may go into that at another time point in time on another video. But the other thing is that a lot of concern with the very act of putting helium into the brake booster and the effect on the map sensor and this and that, um, all of those can be easily dismissed. Uh, it's, it's not the act of putting something into the brake booster hose that causes a lean condition. We know this for a fact because the propane didn't do it. It's, it's the element that you add or the compound that you add that has the effect richer lean. But the bottom line is this, as far as the experimental design goes, if, if I have to keep defending the experimental design, which I still do, and defending on why, even though we're affecting the air in the intake manifold prior to the injectors firing, why is it going to then have an effect on the fuel in the exhaust and all that? And I still hold with my method, but the problem is, is that an experiment is not good if everybody questions the design. And that's kind of what ended up happening in that video, and it was honestly a little surprising to me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, in my next experiment, I'm going to do two things. First of all, and foremost, I did find a source not too far away that guarantees 99.999998 something percent purity helium. So the helium issue will be eliminated. We are gonna use pure helium for the experiment. That is the most important thing. But the other thing I'm going to do is I've redesigned the experiment and I decided that it would probably make everybody happier, and I'm sure you guys will agree with this, if instead of adding the helium pre-combustion, I add it directly to the exhaust stream. And that way I, I dilute the existing hydrocarbon and oxygen content in the exhaust stream directly as opposed to doing it before combustion. I'm sure everybody would agree with that. That way I don't have to justify the experimental design. 
This car does have a secondary air injection reaction system, so I can put this stuff directly into an exhaust manifold, and I think that that's going to be the easiest way to do it. So those are the two things that I plan on doing very, very soon, hopefully very soon. After that, I'm, I'm still really uncomfortable about leaving the previous video up. Maybe it is true. Maybe there is 100% helium that I used. I don't know. But if it's not, I, I just don't like leaving that video up there and confusing people because I don't think too many people have videos like that up there. And I really feel weird about having it up there. What I'm going to do is when I do this experimental redesign, I think I'm going to sort of, you know, delete this video and the previous one and have the new video up, but it'll sort of be like a mold with the introduction from the previous video, which I think is important if people haven't seen that before, and then replacing the old experiment with the new experiment. So it'll be a little bit of a hybrid, I think. And I think that's the best way to handle this, because I only want there to be one video out there with what I am confident finally answers the question. And for the record, by the way, because that experiment is invalid, I am back to my original thinking. I do believe that the oxygen sensor only detects oxygen. My understanding of the chemistry with how it works, it, it's congruent with it being an oxygen sensor. So I actually now have switched back to where I was before, just for the record. So anyway, uh, I will try to get this experiment done and the video done as soon as possible. I'm probably not going to bother answering a lot of the comments and everything on the first video because most of them are going to be moot. The experiment design is what was questioned mostly, and we are going to do a much simpler experimental design. So I think that'll make everybody happy. Put your comments in this video if you have any ideas or issues with the experimental design that I'm proposing because I'm going to look here first and then hopefully before this weekend I can get this experiment done and we'll put the new video up hopefully before this weekend. So thanks again for your support. Sorry about that. Like I said, I did my due diligence. I wanted to just point out that a lot of you guys get on me when I complain about people that kind of talk out of their ass and they don't give correct information on the internet and that I should just ignore them. Well, you know, I just want to point out to you guys that the reason we're in this situation and that I've wasted all my time with that previous experiment, wasted some of your guys' time, I guess, wasted 35 bucks on that cylinder, is because I looked at a lot of sources and the sources could not turn out to be trusted. So people, again, putting false information out on the internet. I don't know who's telling the truth. And you see the effects of it right here. So that's the reason that I have such a disdain for people that have no idea what they're talking about, but they just have to give an answer instead of saying, well, I don't know. I probably shouldn't contribute to the knowledge pool. So lesson learned here, I guess. But uh, we're going to get pure helium, redesign the experiment, and we'll be back as soon as possible. Thanks for your support.